Hello and welcome to our talk. We are pleased to present our work Relu Fields, the little nonlinearity that could. We begin with a brief high level summary of our work. As we all know quite well, nerves, that is neural radiance fields, was a huge step forward in novel view synthesis. They showed fantastic quality results on the task of reconstructing 3D scenes from ground truth images and their corresponding poses. However, the multilayer perceptron, that is MLP based representation introduced by NERF, is very slow in training as well as in rendering. Specifically, the training time required is of the order of hours. Prior to NERF, the traditional way of storing such information has been in the form of a voxel quantized volumetric grid. We find that optimizing these voxel volumes in a stage wise manner that is training the voxel grid from a coarse to a fine resolution as visible from the visualization can actually reconstruct the 3D scenes much faster compared to nerves. The time needed in this case is of the order of minutes. However, these grids are unable to match the required quality as can be seen from this visualization. Hence, we introduce ReLU fields, a simple modification to voxel grids that can be trained and evaluated quickly while also retaining much of the high quality reconstructions that NERF introduced. Specifically, ReLU fields also takes training time in the order of minutes similar to voxel grids. We now cover some background for our proposed method in detail, followed immediately by our proposed method itself. The overall high level pipeline of NERF can be viewed as follows. It takes as input a bunch of images and their corresponding camera poses which is then followed by an optimization step to build the underlying 3D scene representation of the input. This 3D scene representation so constructed can then be rendered or viewed from novel camera poses that were not even a part of the input set. Let's dive a bit deeper into how this representation is optimized. The optimization step of NERF very elegantly plugs two components together. Firstly, an MLP is used for representing the 3D scene volumetrically and secondly, the scene is rendered using physically based volume tracing. With these two components in place, the MLP representation is trained simply by optimizing the MSE, that is mean squared error, between the rendered pixel values and the ground truth pixel values. So since MLPs are quite ubiquitous at this point, we dive a bit further into the volumetric rendering block. These two lines represent the discretized version of the mathematical equations with which the volumetric scene is rendered. In order to understand them, consider that the scene is made up of this small plant for which a single pixel from a particular camera can be rendered through the following steps. Rays are marched into the volume to probe the representation for instantaneous sample values along the ray. These sampled values are essentially the instantaneous density and the directional color. Finally, for numerical reasons, the discrete deltas between the adjacent samples is used for compositing the final value for the particular pixel, which in this case is this pleasant green color. Also, since it's not relevant to our discussion, we skip the part about positional encodings in nerves. To talk about some issues with nerves in detail, as alluded to earlier, apart from the sort of slow training and rendering, another issue with MLPs is that they are basically an intricate box of enigmatic connections, which implies that any edits made to the weights of the MLP locally may have global effects on the content of the scene, which restricts the editability. And the weight encoding also makes this representation difficult to use for synthesis tasks like generative modeling. So let's take a step back and look into where nerves came from. Volumetric rendering traditionally stored scene information in a regular 3D voxel grid. This approach is simple and fast, which means in a way that it's solving both the problems with nerves. But it has the caveat of being expensive in terms of memory storage. As a result, the quality achieved by such voxel grid approaches essentially plateaued at some point and couldn't reach the level that nerves attained. But now we ask the question, why is that the case? And in this work, we investigate the root cause of this jump in result quality by starting with traditional voxel grids and trying to see what has to be added to get to the quality level of nerves. To put 
traditional voxel grids in the context of nerves one can simply visualize that instead of the mlp the 3d scene is being represented by two dense voxel grids one representing the volumetric density and the other representing the appearance the appearance grid can be modeled through the use of the popular and very well tested spherical harmonics However, in all of our experiments, we found the results to have fuzzy geometries and to be giving a blurry appearance overall. This led us to the following discovery. From our analysis, we found the reason for this blurriness to be somehow related to the way the grids are interpolated. Here we describe, on, albeit on a high level, how traditional interpolation works. In order to compute the data value of a point located anywhere in the grid, firstly the cell that contains the point is located and the data values at the corners are looked up. Then the data value at the point of interest is computed as a weighted average of the corner values. In most cases, this weighted average is a simple linear function, hence terms like bilinear, trilinear, etc. are used. If we repeat the procedure for all the points continuously inside the cell, it gives rise to a smooth pattern like this, which apparently in the density grids case um, is the main cause of the blurriness. Hence, the only proposed change for getting rid of this blurriness that we put forth is simply to incept a ReLU nonlinearity right after the bilinear interpolation. Importantly, note that we allow the density to take negative values, which in this case do not have a physical interpretation on the raw grid. The rest of the rendering process is agnostic to this change due to the nonlinearity being the ReLU function. Here we show a small subset of the configurations using which various hard creases in the density can be modeled by the ReLU field cell. If all the values on the corners are positive, then the behavior simply reverts to bilinear interpolation. Whereas for other combinations, various types of hard creases or surfaces can be modeled. We demonstrate this idea also through a more real and concrete example of trying to model a train engine vector art through optimizing a ReLU field. The comparison is made to a traditional bilinearly interpolated grid. As can be seen through the stage-wise training from a course to a final resolution, that at the current stage equals 3, the ReLU field outperforms the bilinear interpolation by a strong margin both in terms of the numerical score and the visual quality. However, the same results are not observed when working with natural images which mostly contain smooth transitions. Hence, we restrict the use of ReLU field grids only to model the density and not the spherical harmonics coefficients. To demonstrate the utility and feasibility of our proposed change, we put the method to test through the following applications. For modeling geometries through 3D occupancy fields, we see that as usual grids give blurry results, while MLPs do much better, they still fall short compared to ReLU fields on this dragon example. The numerical performance here is evaluated using the volumetric IOU which corroborates the visual story. Here's another example of the thigh statue model. In case of the 3D radiance fields application, although grids and ReLU fields both train a lot faster than nerve, ReLU field obtains a much better visual quality compared to grids. Here's another example for comparison. Please refer to the paper for more detailed experiments and evaluations. As a proof of concept, we also show some qualitative results for modeling a real captured 3D scene using the ReLU field grid for the foreground and using multi-sphere grids for Atal et al. for the background. As is the case with any research, our method also has some limitations. Firstly, we inherit the expensive memory storage requirement from voxel grids, which is a restriction on the implementation side. But as a core representation, in our opinion, the fact that ReLU field can only model one crease per voxel is quite a big limitation. 
To provide the main summary of our work, we describe the following. Firstly, a huge shout out to the cool concurrent works of Planoxel, Direct Voxel Go, and Instant NGP. But what we convey through our work is that in order to go from a quality like this to a quality like this, all you need is a humble little ReLU. And you get speed, simplicity, and backward compatibility for free. Finally, before concluding, we demonstrate the ReLU field's amenability to the de facto convolutional neural network framework for generative modeling. Thank you for your attention and please feel free to visit our webpage and check out our code for more details.